Hi everybody, this is Gijs again and this time not with a review. Um, in December you might recall that I was a jury member and head jury of the ISPO Outdoor Awards. Um, and this week I've spent three days in that building and there are about, I don't know, 16 big holes with sporting goods, outdoor equipment and winter sports. Um, the last three days I've been looking at new products, talking to producers about developments uh, and today I will give you a very small insight on some of the products that were awarded, that we handed prices out to and some products that I actually just personally like. It's a very very small peek in the kitchen because I could shoot here for days but I didn't have that time today. Um, so maybe next time I'll give you a more detailed insight on a trade show like this but now just a very small peek in my kitchen. Most booths at the trade show have a very open structure, except for the one from the North Face. It's one big closed black box and you have to be specially invited to even get in. Uh, well, I was invited and there I met Scott Mellon. And Scott explained to me something which is going to be, well, maybe a very important thing for all us people outdoors. So, watch my interview that I made earlier this morning before the trade show opened with Scott. With me is Scott Mellon. He is the general manager Global, global on mountain sports for the North Face. And this year the North Face has got something big coming and that is called Future Light. Scott, please spread your light on Future Light. Thank you, Jeez. Um, Future Light is a technical outerwear solution that was in response to our athletes request for a truly breathable waterproof shell solution. Um, they are working at a very high aerobic level deep in the mountains, 6,000 meters, 7,000 meters, 8,000 meters, and they want to eliminate the risk of wetting out their base layer, hypothermia, high risk of death in the, in the Himalaya. Um, so we started this project two years ago, and I'm happy today to present it to you and, and your audience. It's the highest performing fabric with the lowest footprint. Okay. So we were able to actually do two things. One is advance the technical features and nature of the, of the actual material, but at the same time do it in a very responsible way. And if we talk geek-wise, material-wise, yeah. what kind of stuff is it actually? So what we've done is we've, we've stepped out of the incumbent supply chain and we have developed our own process from start to finish. So we've actually gone deep into the origin of the yarn that we use in the face textile and the backer textile. And we've nominated 100% recycled polyester and nylon chips to produce the yarn that we then use in the face and the backer fabrics. We then have our own spinning technique, our own weaving technique for the face and the backer fabrics. But key to this entire initiative is the membrane. So What's the in between? Yeah, the membrane is yeah. like the... It's like the, the waterproof, breathable layer. Well, like it's, we used it's, to like, call it. it's like an Oreo cookie. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got a face fabric, yeah. a backer fabric, yeah. and then you have this lovely, you know, soft stuff like in the middle. Yeah. Um, in the context of Future Light, we stepped out of you know, this normal theory of using PTFE or EPTFE, and we created a nanofiber mesh. So instead of making a solid, we made a mesh. The mesh then has this incredible amount of breathability while still being totally waterproof. So we're creating this um, through a process called electrospinning, which is a uh, technique within the larger nanospinning family. We're creating fiber on the dimension of 200 nanometers, and we're creating this mesh in 3 gram, 4 gram, 5 gram, 6 gram versions uh, per meter squared, mm -hmm. which is essentially 10% uh, of the weight of the current incumbent membranes. We had to develop a completely new lamination technique to get the face and the backer textiles to laminate correctly to the film. <clears throat> and because the film is so delicate, you end up with this incredible hand feel and lightness and compactness of the textile. <clears throat> this really revolutionized um, outerwear technologies. Because it feels really thin. Yeah. I won't say flimsy. How strong is this actually? Well, 
It's been to the top of Mount Everest and skied Everest. Yeah. It's been to the top of Lhotse and skied the Lhotse Kuar for the first time ever. We've had athletes that have done 100 continuous days in the material with zero defect. Okay, so it should not make any problems if you're wearing a heavy backpack as well? No, no. It's passed all of our abrasion resistance yeah. testing, all of our pill testing. Um, in most parts of the world, it's covered by our lifetime warranty. Yeah, not in Europe. That's a bit of a yeah, pity for us, maybe. I know, I know. Well, come to the US. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> maybe we don't even need it, so why bother? Yeah, exactly. You're not going to need it, so yes. it's um, kind of moot. If you look at the consumer, um, maintenance-wise, <coughs> it's a laminated uh, process. Yes, correct. And on the, outer, on the outside fabric, there is a DWR finish. That's correct. So we developed a new chemistry for our durable water repellent finish, yeah. which we call C0 Super DWR. And it's PFC free, yeah. has no fluorine, and it's four times more durable than traditional chemistry, meaning that it maintains 80% of its water repellency after 80 wash cycles. So that means in my life that if I look at my garments and the times I wash it, this is going to last basically my garments lifetime cycle with... I'm hoping that you would never have to pour a retreat yeah, into yeah. your washing machine and put that fluorine back into the watershed. Okay. And if I was if I was needing to get it reactivated, how do I do this? I would prefer that you wash it yeah. with a really mild detergent on cold temperature. Yeah. And then tumble dry it with a mild heat. Okay, tumble dry. Yeah. So not with an ironing. No, 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 no. Just tumble dry it. And that should do the trick. Yeah. Um, keep now, it clean. Keep it keep clean. clean. <laughs> okay. You want to look good in the mountains, right? Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> Especially for videos. Right. Um, I've seen this is a very soft fabric. You've yeah. got some other models that are a bit more uh, stiff. There's one that's even more subtle, yeah. I think, for running. Correct. How, Correct. how do you get this mix? Well, the, the actual theory is that we can tune the fabric for the specific needs of the consumer and their sport. So I make really light, breathable textiles yeah. for runners and ski mountaineers as we have here behind us. And then I can make more durable materials for heavier use like skiing and snowboarding or alpine climbing. So really, by changing the dimension of the mesh, so 3 gram, 4 gram, mm -hmm. <clears throat> changing the denure of the textiles, we can really kind of tune and optimize the product for the end consumer. Okay. Which is rad. No one's done that before. Is this also a material that you would use in single wall tents? Oh my god, you're like reading my mind. So I'm, I'm gonna deliver it in gloves. Okay, so yeah. truly breathable, waterproof gloves. Single wall tents, using essentially the same textile yeah. that we're feeling right now, so that you have no condensation inside the tent in the morning. And we'll debut it in spring 24. So okay, truly cool. breathable. Yeah. Um, Take climb that one further. And is there going to be maybe like a personalization process that if you measure my body mapping stuff mm -hmm. on heat and sweat that you can make a personalized one? In the, dream the, conditions? The potential's unlimited, right? Is it? Okay. It's really unlimited. Like I think the future of this textile innovation is yeah. kind of unlimited in terms of being able to personalize body map. Um, just scratching the surface right now. So there are going to be more innovations yeah. in the very near future. <clears throat> yeah, you know, Future Light is the first of eight innovations that yeah. we have. But Future Light will have a 2.0, a 3.0, a 4.0 version, okay. um, which we're already in develop on, so this development mean, on. This means also that the North Face is getting a bit back to its origins on maybe the, the Tough Wearing Summit series. Maybe we want to be the true disruptive leader in this marketplace <laughs> and, and you know yeah, yeah. really bring kind of a fresh palette of product for for consumers really honestly driven through um, inspiration that we get from our athletes so I'm always solving problems for our athletes and that ends up being really a big benefit to our consumers okay thank you so much for yeah, this super fun talk yeah okay. great to meet you thanks a lot <laughs> oops one of the things that really surprises me about this trade show is the fact that there are a lot of packs for bikers uh, who have more reflection or some extra lights. Handy!
When I talk to you about getting more light into backpacks for bikers, uh, Faudet has also got a cool trick. And it's almost the same thing like the mount, also this one is a bit less integrated. One of the things that is sort of new, but it was actually introduced last year on uh, Outdoor and Free Town, is that Gore-Tex, you know, the black label, waterproof and guaranteed to keep you dry, is also having a little brother or sister, which is Gore-Tex Infinium. And Gore-Tex Infinium is not guaranteed to keep you dry, but it's really an exceptional breathing material. Gore-Tex Infinium, you can translate this like the new way of thinking about soft shells. Not every brand has its own booth on ISPO. For example, Berg Outdoor, and they are in the booth of the country Portugal. Um, and the nice thing about Burg Outdoor is that I gave on Sunday two awards to them. And the first one was for the Sordo boot. Uh, of course, this looks like a more fashionable boot instead of real hardcore outdoor. But the cool thing about this one is that it's totally uh, biodegradable. If you're done with your shoes, you put them basically into the garden and under ideal circumstances, they will well, be back into nature within a month of six. Then the other product from Berg Outdoor is, and the award is really heavy, um, is the Giras Zero Gravity Jacket. And the jacket, the outer shell, is made out of B-grade parachute material. So it's, got, it's not functional as a parachute A-grade, so that's why it's used in a jacket. Um, the zippers, they are also totally recycled material. So in this way, Berg Outdoor is one of the leading sustainable companies at the moment. One of the more colored products that I've seen on ISPO this year is this jacket from Rapp. It's a combination of Gore, Infinium and Shake Dry. And Shake Dry, that means basically to keep the breathable material on the outside. Uh, the sad thing is that this is not probably going to be into production. Isbjorn of Sweden is one of the coolest kids brands that I know. And I've been using this jacket and the pants you can't see at the moment during my testing in Montafon, which is Scandinavian Outdoor Awards during meeting. And it felt fine to me. Um, it's very well thought of into all the smallest details. Um, that also means that it comes with a rather high price. I think the total set is about 700 euros. Um, but, you know, if you consider that this is going to last a kid's lifetime and probably of the next kid, then of the next kid, or of nephews and nieces, um, this is really a durable piece. And well, if it's a lot of money, well, that's basically your choice. This piece from Devold is also an award winner. And the reason is because it is a very clever piece. It's made out of wool. And if you wear it like this, this is the normal way, this is really directed to your skin. So it's more about a bit of isolation, but also humid um, regulation. Now, if you look very closely onto these ribs, and I hope you can see this, then you see that it's a sort of a dry uh, three-dimensional weaving. So there's a lot of air between the blue, light blue, and the black blue ones. So if you turn this piece inside out, you actually get more isolation. So if you're a bit cold, just turn it inside out and you're warmer clever and the Viking Hero GTX shoe is actually the reason why Isbjorn didn't win a prize in the kids department because we thought the, the Viking shoe is a little bit better. Uh, the special thing about this one is that it's got a 360 degree reflection around it and I will put in a picture now from Sarah holding the shoe with a flash. Uh, Sarah is one of my colleagues at the Scandinavian Outdoor Group. Um, and then you can see actually how good this shoe reflects. So even when the kit goes out without a reflection shirt at night, it's still very visible. And the other cool thing is that the Viking shoe is also built around a specially built kit's last. That's Malcolm from Marmot. Uh, Malcolm, tell me a bit about the Marmot West Rip Parka, which is in this sort of small pocket, which is a big jacket. Big jacket, small stuff sack, yeah. Tell so, me. West Rib Parker has been designed uh, as a really durable and dependable cold weather mountaineering piece. So it's your big layer jacket, it's your storm layer when the weather gets really yep. bad. Uh, but the key thing about it is it uses new warm cube technology. So warm cube? Warm cube, yeah. Okay, show okay, me. So I think, yeah, we need to have a look inside. So warm cube technology uh, okay. is a a new way of looking at how you fix the insulation in your jacket. So with the warm cubes, you have the minimum of down movement yep. in your jacket, which means that the warmth stays put. 
and it means we can also target and place the warmth exactly where we need it to be. Yes. So minimum down movement, maximum stabilization of the warmth in the jacket. Okay. Now I'm just pretending to be stupid, but I was on the ISPO jury meeting, so I know that they actually won a gold award for this. Yes, we did. Congratulations. Yeah, we're really pleased by the gold award. <laughs> um, if we talk about, let's say, you've got the baffles, the cubes. Yep. But the thinner parts, is there not going to exist something like a cold warm bridge, if that's the correct word in English? Okay, so a couple of things can will, ch will protect against that. So yeah. on the inside of the jacket, we've got the, the warm cube filled with down. The full outer layer of the jacket is layered over with synthetic insulation. Okay. So we've got a double layers of insulation. We've got lots of space between the synthetic and the warm cube as well, which yeah. also traps more air. Um, and what it means is the synthetic layer helps prevent moisture degrading the down. And if you're on a long expedition and you're in a real tight spot, yeah. that yeah. durability and potential protection from down leaking out if you snag your jacket on, a, on the rock or on an ice yeah. axe or whatever. So it's a real piece of armor for, for cold weather. Um. This looks like a cool way of making sleeping bags as well. Well, it's funny you should mention that. So in future seasons, Warm Cube is going to spread through different categories and yeah. sleeping bags is definitely one that we're working on. So keep, your, keep a look out, there'll be a sleeping bag. I will. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. And here we have one of the other winners of the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards. And this was a prize they didn't expect probably because they got the Sustainability Award. And that's because this product is totally made out of wool. And the special thing is it is a fleece. And we all think that fleece should be probably a plastic. But in this case it's not. It's just a wool. And if you feel this, this is probably the softest product you will ever touch in your life. So it might be a bit looking like a couch potato jacket or hoodie it definitely is not because I've been wearing this during testing at the Scandinavian Outdoor Award meeting and it's really a wonderful piece this is actually one of the coolest things I've seen on the trade show so far it's the Advanate Hybrid Pro it's an avalanche shovel with a probe integrated into the shovel itself and in the shovel is also a small winterproof tent so that you always have shelter in case of emergency and as you can see it's erected with just your two walking poles or ski poles which is I think quite a clever design and in this case it's still a prototype so We'll have to wait on this too, maybe next year. Okay, another award winner on ISPO is the Ortlieb Attrack ST. <laughs> Falco, show me what the gimmick is. The gimmick is, uh, it is a backpack which is possible to open like a big duck. So the entrance is from the back. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Direct access, easy to open, one straight movement and you can take it everything like you want for a short trip close it make one two, two. and then you have a full suspension system yeah. with ventilation so it is a uh, adjustable suspension system yeah which fits to to xs to m and we have also a unisex version which fits from s to uh, xl and it is a backpack for sure with the hip fins and the shoulder straps but it is also modular because we have daisy chains here on the yeah. front and so you can adjust compression straps if you need it you can put a front compression you can do a helmet fixation a dragging stick fixation so you can use it like an outdoor pack so on one side it is a travel bag yeah. to travel from a to b from the other side it is a complete outdoor bag so you can do it okay close. thank you falco welcome and i have one for review at the moment so i will keep you updated on this Okay, with me is Sean from Echo. He's head of marketing for outdoor. That's right. And um, well, you won a technology award for the Echo Dry 10 process. Quite right. Could you explain this to me? With the greatest of pleasure. So, um, basically, what we're working on at the moment is, as you know, everybody's looking towards sustainability. But what we did decided was to actually look right to the root of a, of a part of our process that we own as Echo and say, so how can we change the rules? Yeah. So of course, tanning uses a lot of water and we decided to see how we could remove as much water as possible from the tanning process uh, to save water, reduce water consumption. And what we ended up with right now is where we can take out uh, in the next three years, 
we will reach a point where every year we will decrease our water usage a year by 25 million liters. So that's one liter per pair of shoes, um, 25 million liters a year where we'll be reducing our water usage. So, okay. so of course this was a big innovation. That's a big impact. Yeah. Um, and the tannery is in the Netherlands? So or is it for every tannery Echo, Echo uses? So every tannery that we own. Okay. So we own uh, four tanneries globally. So we will start with uh, executing this and refining it in our own tanneries. Yeah. And then the ambition is that in the good of being global citizens, we will actually hand over the technology at no cost to other tanneries so they can participate in water reduction as well. Okay, but it's not that far, I think, at the moment. Uh, that's, that's to be for, for the very near future? We're already making it. So we're already making a percentage of the products in our collection with yeah. this process. And of course, then we replicated it out um, on a more commercial scale. Yeah. So as I said, by three years from now, all shoes with leather in the Echo collection will be using the dry tan process. Okay, and but, but you, the leather you produce, it's not only used for Echo uh, shoes and other stuff Echo makes. You also produce leather for other brands. So we produce leather for other brands, of course, and um, people are welcome to approach our tanneries. Yeah. And this means that, of course, all leather Echo producers is, uh, will be dry tanned. So okay. indirectly, other people will be benefiting from this technology. So the impact will be even bigger. And bigger. So the impact is actually it's broader. Yeah, okay. Because it's not just that we want to keep it and say it's okay. us, it belongs to us. The impact is that um, all shoes um, and products that come out, all leather, let's say, that's yeah. sold from Echo tanneries, will be dry tanned. Okay, so, thank you so much and yeah, so good well. luck with your voice. Thank you, it's been a long fair. <laughs> cool. I know. I am here with Grutzebeck, you're Marcus. Yes. Are you the inventor of the Grutzebeck? Sure, I'm the founder of the Grutzebeck and I'm the product developer of Grutzebeck. And you're the winner of? The product of the year. On Espo. On Espo, yes. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was in a jury meeting yes. and we quite soon saw that this is different than what there is on the market. Could you explain to my public yeah, sure. what's different? Yeah, it has a lot of things. I start with the heart of the sleeping bag. This is a mix of wool and down. It yeah. was really hard to develop because the wool don't want to connect to the down. So we always we wash it, the wool was right, the down was left. Now we can fix it and we have a very good filling. It's washable and it's like an air condition. It means if it's cold, it takes moisture out of the sleeping bag, it's yeah. getting warmer. If it's too warm, it gives back the moisture, it's getting cooler. The wool always want to go to 33 degrees, the skin temperature. So you sleep better ah, and okay. wake up the next morning much more fit. This is one yeah. thing. Another thing is we only use natural material completely. From the packing, it's a paper bag, yeah. the labeling, it's cotton also. In the outside area, we have a long piece of cotton. So it's closed himself if it gets wet and inside a normal cotton. And you also can adjust the sleeping bag, you can make it more wide or more yeah, tight. Yeah. So you have a lot of things to do it. And the best thing is it's so cuddle. <laughs> yeah, you like yeah, this, yeah. You like this natural material, you can sleep in it, it's really great. Yeah, it's totally different from, yeah. from all the artificial sleeping bags that yeah. we know. And I know, especially my wife, she always sleeps in a um, sleeping bag made out of down with the insert, the, the liner, yeah. insert liner. It's, yeah. it's a cotton one. Yeah, it's uh, just because she likes the feel of it, especially. It's, it's um, what about the buttons? They are yeah. made out of wood. Yeah, we make wood buttons and this is special. It's olive wood because we have for all products Ecotex. Oh, right. Yeah, so yeah. we have no any poison in that sleepy bag. And this is the only button we can get without uh, yeah. with, with the Ecotex certificate. So this is probably the only product we don't have to talk about recycling. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. It can be compostable. It's yeah, compostable, it's compostable completely. Totally. So you have no problem for yeah. the environment. Okay. We have a lot of products we always develop for the environment. Yeah. Did you get a lot of reactions on winning the prize? Yes, many press come to us yeah, and cool. oh, everybody want to see, everyone want to touch it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's really Happy good. future. So Thank I you. hope you enjoyed my little insight on ISPO. And of course, I can't show all the brands because that would be time-wise just not possible. I just showed you a few brands that I thought are important with innovations and prizes. Uh, and for now, after a week from home, I'm totally worn out and I miss my kids and my wife. So I'm leaving back home, 800 kilometer drive, and I hope to see you next time. And you know, uh, enjoy the outdoors. Ciao.